I'm fabulously lost in a city that lives to eat. It's a city of the senses, a bejeweled, dazzling, fantastical mix of magic and faith, hard work and love of life, grace and wild abandon. It's a city where chaos and serenity happily coexist. It's the city of angels, Bangkok. Maybe it's all the color that makes Bangkok such a pleasure. A drift in flowers, festooned with gilded temples. A wash in brilliant tiles and murals. And brimming with eye-popping food, Bangkok is a sensory feast. Bangkok is Thailand's economic and political capital. It's a business traveler and tourist mecca, and a dynamic mix of mega malls, temples, and markets. But in spite of its size and congestion, Bangkok, with its year-round temperate weather and gracious people, is one of the most welcoming cities on the globe, even in a downpour. I'm here in Chinatown looking for my good friend and Washington, D.C. restaurateur, Daisuke Udagawa. Told me to meet him off Yerat Road, Soy 11, and I'm in the right place. But this entire neighborhood is a food maze. I can tell we'll be here half the night. There are food stalls everywhere on and around Yawarat Road in Bangkok's Chinatown. Flaming walks light up the night, and a little rain doesn't dampen anybody's spirits. Bangkok's a capital that loves to eat. Its nine million plus inhabitants comb the streets searching for the best food. It's a national pastime. Ah, yes, uh -huh. street food for breakfast, I see. Of course, I mean, nobody really cooks in Bangkok. Right. I mean, it's like everything is inside is outside. Plus, you got this variety. It's probably cheaper to buy food outside than getting all the ingredients and cooking it yourself. Plus, you don't have to heat up your apartment with all that heat. What do we got here? Well, this is uh, crispy pork belly. Oh, crispy pork belly. I think pork this belly. is what's called larb guy. Larb That's guy. also pork. Oh, look at that. That's a stuffed bitter melon. That's probably stuffed with chicken. Uh, liver. Fish. Fish at the end? Uh, yeah, it's and a whole fried fish. chicken. Fried I can chicken. recognize fried go. chicken. <laughs> it's true, Bangkok is inside out. The kitchens are on the street, and the whole city is one big dining room. It's so much more fun to eat when you can pick your dish and have it cooked right up before your eyes. And it's all done with great care and skill. Bangkok is a young city. Founded in 1782, it began as a swampy backwater in the delta of the mighty Chow Phraya River. Thailand itself is young. The official history usually dates from 1238 when a capital was established at Sukhothai in northern Thailand. A little more than 100 years later, the capital changed to Ayutthaya. That city lasted about 400 years before being sacked and looted by a Burmese army. Bangkok was founded a short time later. What's more fun than winning the lottery? Anyone can participate in the government lottery and just about everybody does. People hunt for lucky numbers in shrines, in dreams, on license plates and patterns. At the temple Wat Mahabut, people rub oil into the trunk of a sacred tree to discover numbers to play. Luck and magic go back centuries here. Before Buddhism arrived from India, people practiced animism, worshiping spirits and objects. In Bangkok, most buildings have spirit houses where people make offerings to avoid misfortune by keeping spirits housed and happy. Sometimes you'll see an open soft drink with a straw left for the spirits. In this city, Buddhism, magic, animism, and Hinduism all mingle to create a unique faith. Life along the Klongs gives a glimpse into a calmer, more traditional way of life. A fitting finale to our Klong tour is a meal along a canal. Daisuke is taking us to Boat Noodle Canal. Back when Bangkok was a city of canals, noodle vendors paddled along selling their wares. Ah, uh -huh. the first bowl. Cup of my cup. What's and, this red uh, stuff here? Well, this is the vinegar, the scary vinegar. Scary vinegar? <laughs> right. 
That's scary. Okay. And that's, and the, that's a scary vinegar number two. With green peppers. Chilies, yeah. Green chilies. That's scary pepper. Scary pepper. Right, and that's not so scary sugar. Sugar, I can handle there sugar. Go. Mm. Good, very good. This is, um, the soup is thickened with blood. What kind of blood? Um, beef, I think. What did you put on it? I did the scary pepper and scary vinegar number one. Yeah, we're all trying the scary vinegar. It's very good. I don't know why we're calling it scary, but... Well, because I'm a Westerner and I know Thai dishes can be very, very, very spicy. Some can be, yeah, but... I, I have respect. Aha! Oh my goodness. Look at that. Now we do them one at a time, or can you hop from one bowl to the next? You can, but usually people finish a bowl and then they move on. No, they do, okay. Yeah. So Rudy, what do you think? It's wonderful. I mean, it's a party in the mouth. <laughs> nice <laughs> heat in the mouth, but great flavor. It's not the kind of heat that hurts. There's no real downtown to Bangkok, just major districts with town centers. Getting from one to another can literally take hours. Bangkok traffic is legendary. Locals will avoid traveling across the city at all costs. Well, except for a great meal. The SkyTrain provides a speedy, mercifully air-conditioned way out of the jam. Although its scope is limited, it's one of the best places to sit and take in the sights of Bangkok. We're on another quest for soup. Yes, it's sweltering outside, but that doesn't stop people from craving Tum Yum. Mm. So what do we got here? Well, so we've got, the, these are fish balls, fried fish balls. Obviously this is the, the, the small shrimp. They're fried, it's crunchy, and you can Tiny shrimp dip fried. those in here. And this is a vegetable called sayate, and these are really sweet. Ah, here it comes. Tom yum too. Cup and cup. This, this is the tom yum. This is a tom yum. And you see these things sort of floating about? That's that extra ingredients they put. It's the inside of the head. Mm -hmm. They put extra of that. Out of, the that's where out of the freshwater shrimp. Right. Okay. And that's where all the flavor is now. For short trips and for some sanuk, tuk tuks are the way to go. Many are adorned with garlands, offerings to Mei Yan Nan, the goddess of journeys. We're headed to Garland Central, the flower market. In this land of perpetual summer, flowers abound, and the flower market overflows with the ubiquitous garlands that serve as offerings to appease or bring luck. I like that. Ooh. The That's intricate flower designs mirror the elaborate temple decoration. All over Bangkok, gorgeous gilded temples rise up toward the heavens. These serene enclaves in the midst of the roar of traffic and street vendors reflect the duality of the Thai spirit. The contemplative interiors are hushed and solemn, while the temple exteriors burst with color and gold and effervescent energy. These temples often illustrate the uniquely Thai intersection of Buddhism and Hinduism. Buddhism may preach letting go of desires, but that doesn't stop people from pursuing the pleasures of life, food, of course, and shopping. Mega malls abound in Bangkok. Look at this. I mean, I love this town. This is exactly my kind of town. You know, why eat three big meals when you can eat often just well? It's a shopping mall. I mean, this is a food what, court. What is this stuff here? Fried That's fr liver. fried liver back there. Fried, li liver, oh, fried back liver. liver. I've yeah. never had fried liver. Pork bone. Pork bone. Bought it. Fish oh, cake. Look at that. Fish? This is, like, this is like a high-end food court, and you have this street food almost, right? Food has a special place in Buddhist ritual as well. In Thailand, young men are encouraged to spend at least a few months in the monkhood as a kind of rite of passage. Doing so ensures merit or spiritual points, good karma for the next life. Merit is also had by giving alms to monks. Every morning, many people deliver food and receive a blessing in return. Yes, so actually Pad Thai in Thailand is starting from around World War II. As a result of a government decision, an issue, a promotion? Yeah, promoted it because we have the economic state, uh, problem and the rice is very expensive. But right. the rice noodle is made from the broken rice, so that's why it's cheaper. Okay, so broken rice could be used to any rice, any right. form of rice or any right. shape of rice. And these are still rice noodles today? Yes, this is the authentic Pad Thai. And because of our restaurant have the long, long history. So we starting from my grandmother-in-law generation. Mm -hmm. That is uh, for right now, it's like 77 years already. 77, 77 years. Yes, yes, already. And we also use the traditional way to cook the Thai food. Right. Because we use a charcoal stove. The charcoal. Right. Very right. interesting. Yeah. It gives us like the special flavor, special smell. And that is the way that we preserve the traditional Thai cooking method. 
If I were to use one word to describe the Thai people, I would choose graceful. Not just in movement, but full of grace. Just watching the greeting between people, the why, or swift slight bow, speaks volumes about the respect people show each other. And everywhere, Sanook abounds. Lots of the dishes that Daisuke and I have devoured have their roots in Chinese cooking. It's no surprise, Thailand has the largest ethnic Chinese community in Southeast Asia. Chinese traders came to Siam early on and became the merchant class. They assimilated and intermarried. In fact, many Chinese Thai no longer are able to speak Chinese. Chinatown in Bangkok is immense, lively, colorful, and packed with food. In typical Bangkok fashion, the people take a Chinese dish, add their special ingredients, and a new dish is born. A great example of this is the chicken and rice dish, Khao Moon Gai. All right, I'm looking forward this to it. This place has been here for 40 years. 40 years? Yeah. Look at that. Cup and cup. Oh my God, look at that. Now, you must regard first how plump this skin is. You see how plump that skin is? But the skin is plump, but not oily. So they have somehow managed to cook this with by draining the fat only from the skin, which right. will go into the, the meat and it right. tastes really good. But the skin is sort of blown up. It's almost too good to be true. A city filled with fun-loving, food-crazy, spiritually rich, profoundly graceful people. Bangkok is like the perfect Khao Mung Gai. Subtle, balanced, bold, spicy, a symphony of flavors. Bangkok bursts on the palate and lingers in the heart. We end our journey as we began it, on the street in search of more food, in yet another corner of the enormous dining room called Bangkok.